We're seeking him today because we know he has a plan for our lives. We're seeking him today because he has a plan for this fellowship. Now, before we go any further, because you guys did a tremendous job of speaking this word, and here's what y'all said about healing. About healing, and this is what I want to say to the house as I talk about vision and oneness. Is that for church folk, we have to be healed from what we call now church hurt. We have to be healed. So I don't think that that word that they shared was just for y'all on healing. But I believe it's for some people in here that, that have experienced church hurt. Now hear me. And because you have experienced church hurt, you have held back your gifts. You've held back your talents. You've held back your time. You've held back your resources. You've held back your treasures because you don't want to trust yet. But I'm here to tell you that I don't believe that God will bring you to a place after you had church hurt to come here and get hurt again. I believe that God has a way of restoring those. I believe that God has a way of sending somebody or someone to your healing, I mean to your hurts and minister healing. That's why we're going to talk about today about vision and oneness. And that you have to believe that God has you here for a purpose and he has a plan and this is the place for you to exhibit the power that he's given you and that you must stay persistent and believe that he has some tremendous things for this house. Look at you. You're the foundation. Think about it for a moment. Some of y'all just figure, I'm just church goers. No, you're the foundation. God is building something. God is starting something and he's using you. That's amazing. Oh, I know what you're saying, man. No, 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 I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know, Pastor Dunn, you understand. I'm not qualified to be a leader, a deacon, a minister, elder. I'm not qualified. Well, see, that's the problem, is that you're looking at it from your point of view. God says, I have another point of view about you. Sometimes we disqualify ourselves of our past hurts or problems and things that we did wrong versus walking in the grace of God and allowing God to start something new in us. Philippians 1, 6 says, he that begun a good work in us will complete it until the day of Christ. Do you believe that? Matter of fact, I just go back and rewind because Paul said like this. He said to be verbatim, he said, I'm confident of this. I am confident of this, that he that begun a good work in you will complete it till the day of Christ. He's not hoping. He's not a guessing. He's not wishing. He's confident that he's starting a good work in you. And here it is, his second anniversary. Oh, my goodness. And you're ready to get busy. I can see it in you. I can see it in you. I can see you being healed from your hurts. Matter of fact, every head bow, every eye closed. We're going we're gonna to come against that right now in Jesus' name, that spirit of not trusting it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bind up every spirit that the enemy would try to bring about not trusting. Father, we thank you and we loosen the spirit of love the spirit of unity, the spirit of oneness. I thank you and I say you come forth from the north, from the south, from the east and from the west. Your talents, your gifts, your abilities, your treasures. In Jesus' name, you will start to allow God, just like those four young ladies, to utilize your ability. You will be a vessel that God will use. Catherine Coleman said it best. She said, God's not looking for silver vessels and God is not looking for golden vessels, but God is looking for yielded vessels. Today, I pray that you yield yourself to the Spirit of God and let God use you in a greater measure that you've been used in the past. 
And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I am confident of this. Yes, I am. I'm confident. I see you. Uh, my text will be Psalms 133, verse 1. And John chapter 17, verses, no, verse 21. And it reads in Psalms, Behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Can the house say unity? unity. Can it say it again, unity? unity? If you believe in unity, can you say it like you mean to say unity? unity. Okay, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about vision and oneness. Jesus is the speaker here in John chapter 17 where he says, that they all may be one as he's praying to his father. The priestly, high priestly prayer right before he was going to depart. That they all may be one as you, father, and me, and I are one. Or in you, excuse me, I and you. That they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. I'm talking about unity. I'm talking about vision, I'm talking about unity, I'm talking about oneness. The scripture says, behold how good and pleasant it is for us to dwell together in what? In what? Unity. Now I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm going to ask you to keep saying stuff, so don't get mad at me, okay? You know, but the Bible says in, in, in Romans 10, 17, that faith, it comes by hearing. And I discovered that as you say things, you see it, and you say it, and you see it, you remember it more. And I can tell that you guys are students of the word. I can tell. So that's why I'll be telling you to say it, so don't get mad at me. Amen? Praise God. But I want you to notice something in unity. I want you to notice, what are the first three Three letters in unity. What is it? Okay, a couple of people got it. What, what, what is the first three letters in the word unity? Can we say it again? What's the first three letters in union? How about united? How about union? Okay. Well, it tells us right there in those first three letters that in order for us to have any type of unity, I need you and you need me. You and I working together. Unity, union, united, unified. You and I working together. I can't do this by myself. Jesus talking to his disciples, and, 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 and I, mean, I mean, he's praying, and he's saying, Father, that they will be one like us. Like, we are one. Yeah. God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, but we're one. Father, that's my prayer. That's his prayer. That prayer still rings true. It still goes forth to this day. Because God has words of eternity. His word is eternal. It keeps going. It keeps going and on and on and on to the break, to the break, to the break of dawn. <laughs> the thing keeps going on. It doesn't stop. You know, his, he, he told Isaiah, he said, what? My word shall not what? Return void. So he is still looking for people who are willing to work in unity. And there's something about when he sees people working in unity. We don't have time to go to it right now, but you could just write this down as a reference. Genesis chapter 11. Genesis chapter 11 will remind you about unity. It'll remind you about oneness. Even though these individuals, when they was building the, to the Tower of Babel, and these individuals apparently had the wrong motives. But God said, let us, this is what the scripture says, let us go down. See, I want you to understand. Everybody say us. Uh, See, now, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. God said, let what? Us. Create man in our. Our. It's about unity. It's about oneness. It's about us coming together. But anyway, he said, let us go down and see what they're doing. Think about it. Even though apparently their motives was wrong, God still honored their unification and what they did. 
to the point where he said, let me, I got to go check this out. How much more? How much more? If we come together, you and I, unity, you and I, we come together to do something for the kingdom of God. Don't you look at yourself and say, I can't do it. Get I can't out of your vocabulary. So many believers, so many people who suffer with can't-itis. Do you hear what I just said to you? When you see something that seems totally impossible, you say, I, I can't. But see, it ain't for you. If, if it looks impossible, that's why you need God. Philippians 4, 13 is my favorite scripture. It's the first verse that I ever remembered verbatim. I'll never forget it. I was a junior in college, and I wanted to be like the preacher. I said, I want to quote a scripture too. They quoting all these scriptures. I'm like, man, I, I, I know how to quote all, I know how to sing the songs, I know how to rap and everything, but I don't know no scripture. And I wanted something that was applicable, that's something I can apply to my life. And because I was a student athlete, it made sense to understand Philippians 4, 13. For it says, I can do all things through Christ, who strengthens me. So what that did was that gave me the confidence. So if I'm playing or if I'm running or I'm lifting weights and I get tired, I get fatigued, I go back to that scripture, I can do all things through Christ. I can do all things through Christ. Man, I got a test. I got to study, but I got a test. Man, it's hard, but I can do all things through Christ. Man, I just got saved, and I really don't really know how to walk in all the things of God, but I can do all things through Christ. So it taught me to have a can attitude versus having can't-itis. Philippians 4.13, it says, I can do. See, the first three words says, I can do. As Christians, we should be can-do people. Oh, I could do that, you know, in the will of God. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I could do that. I'm up for the challenge. I can do, yes. not I can't. And so the reason why I said that, because there's some leaders here that need to come forth. But you're saying I can't. I can't stand up and speak so eloquently like pastor and his wife. I, I can't do that. You know, I, I'm not a singer. I can't really sing. I, Man, man, if they find out what I used to do, man, I, I, I can't stand before nobody and pray. But the problem is you're looking at it from your perspective. You're not looking at it from God's perspective. God will use you if you're willing to be used. For remember what I just told you in the prayer. God's not looking for silver vessels. He's not looking for golden vessels. He's just looking for what? Yielded vessels. Are you yielded? Yielded. Man, God could do some great things in you. So I'm looking forward to some great things here. I am so looking forward to that. But God came down in Genesis 11. And he saw him doing something great. And as my wife and I was driving down this road. And we saw the sign. Goodness, grace of the life. I saw a sign. And it was blue. <laughs> and it says airs. And I, and I looked and I said, there you go, baby. Took that left. Came up in here. Man, I said, that is so awesome. Yeah, he got a sign. I said, my man got a sign. I mean, I mean, I'm telling you, he got a sign, a big sign. I'm like, I mean, when we first came here, you had, you needed a GPS, you needed a map, and you needed about 14 people in the city to tell you what a church was. Come on, somebody. You know, all, anytime you have to tell somebody, look, my church is on such and such, such and such street. And then they, you go, how to get there? Okay. When you make that right on the boulevard, you got to make that quick left. You go up the hill, don't go too far. So take that left, and then you'll see a truck and a house over there. Once you go through that, you only got to go two miles, and then right around the corner, that's where the church is. 